Well, uh, what I reckon is, first of all, uh, they're, they're shy. And uh, it's all about breaking the ice. Like, if, if, the, if the tutor can do that by breaking the ice, humor, by humor or by, you know, by asking a question, but somehow, you know, somehow just getting, getting them out of their comfort zone and out of their shell, because generally they want to talk, but somehow, somehow they want someone to, you know, prompt them or somehow, you know, make sure that, you know, someone is willing to, you know, uh, press their buttons at the right time so that they're willing to, you know, deliver when, uh, when, the, when, the, when the tutor ask, asks a certain question. But as, as it goes on, like from like second to third tutor, fourth to fifth, as it goes on, the, all the students start, you know, start, start to interacting. And then, it, then, then it's like, then it's perfect with what we call a brainstorming session. And it's like everyone is uh, coming up with their own fabulous ideas. And hence, there's, uh, there's a better output. So for example, in one of my tutes, um, the lecturer knows um, all the students' names. So we go in, we say hello, she marks the role. Uh, and then whenever we have discussions, she can ask certain points of view from certain people around the classroom. Um, and so that helps to stimulate the class a little bit more and helps to, to stimulate learning for everybody, um, as opposed to just um, reading out the answers or picking someone randomly and ha then having to say their answers. Um, so I think names are, it's a small thing, but I think an important thing as well. I think at the beginning of semester, every tutor should get their students to turn around and talk to everyone, do it for a few classes so everyone kind of becomes friends. And that just really lightens up the mood and encourages people to relax in class. I think uh, keeping up to date with the information, that was right. Keeping up to date with the information, uh, so we actually know what's happening in the exam, um, when our assignments are being marked and they may seem like such petty things but they do matter to students. We like to be kept up to date and we like our tutors to be kept up to date and we like to know what's going on in our unit. So because they're our first point of contact with it, make sure they are up to date. A tutor is definitely someone that can get students to talk, I suppose. Uh, it's going to be hard um, because most of the students will be um, intimidated by the fact that they may get the answers wrong, they may appear stupid, they, may, they don't want to embarrass themselves in front of their classmates or even people they don't know. Um, so a tutor would be, a good tutor would be able to help them to over that com overcome that fear by different ways. For, for example, they can just um, in the tutorials or something. In the examples they'll give out in the tutorials, maybe they can include students' names to amuse them, uh, make them feel related. In that way, students would be more, uh, find her more approachable, easier to talk to. Um, I guess like if you have, if you know their name and it kind of makes it closer and yeah, it, it forms kind of this closer relationship with your tutor and it's easier to talk to. And um, yeah, it's rather, rather than not knowing your tutor, sometimes, yeah, you don't really talk to them and stuff. So it's good to know your tutor and sometimes I think it's important for them to, to interact. Maybe like, oh, what did you do over the weekend? And just ask and get to know each other. I think that's good, yeah. I found that um, sometimes the methods that are effective are if the subject has a class participation component where it actually contributes to some marks of the assessment. That encourages people to actually do the preparation and therefore um, come more prepared to a class than as opposed to when it's not and they just have to turn up and um, you'll find generally when there is marks attached to it, students will prepare due to the fear of losing marks and also it's an easier way to gain marks as well. So. Yeah, I've found when the subjects I've done have participation, the students are more willing to prepare. Um, so I think yeah, it's a good idea if there's more participation in classes. Well, this actually happened in a law tutorial of mine. Um, and what the tutor did was he actually 
in his first three tutorials, he started cracking some jokes. And they weren't necessarily law related, they were just meant to liven the mood and just make uh, conversation free flow, uh, flow more freely. And it tended to work, I noticed. And I think that this is an excellent technique that stu uh, tutors can do to encourage students to speak up and feel more comfortable. It's all about making the student feel more comfortable. That's what I feel. Make us feel comfortable and let us know that it is okay to make a mistake because sometimes with the tu um, tutors, if we do make a mistake, they just go, yeah, that's a really stupid answer. We'll just shut you down completely. So if you make us feel comfortable enough to talk, even if we don't think it's right, then eventually we'll, we'll talk more and participate more. Maybe ask more questions and try and get them motivated into discussing the topic, like teach them things and get them to portray what they just taught back to the class or back to the tutor. But they shouldn't be too pushy simply because otherwise that a lot of students knowing from what I've seen will stop attending because otherwise they'll feel intimidated within the class as they feel they're being picked on. <laughs> I think, I, well, for me, if I, was, if I were a tutor, what I would do is if I go into a class, before I go into the, to the tutor, I would talk to my lecturer in charge first, like my, for my subject. I would ask him, well, um, exactly where we're at, you know, which topic are we on, um, which area of that specific topic do you want me to expand on that people don't really get? Like, you know, for example, for one specific point, most students don't really get because it's hard, like it takes time to get around it, then the tutor can take time to explain in the tutorial more in depth and that helps the students and afterwards um, then he can go into the questions like you know to strengthen the knowledge that we've learned during that week. It's good to have some activities like uh, you can have a uh, um uh, group presentation during the whole semester. So each class you got some group and uh, do the presentation so the whole class won't be so so bored. And, uh, and uh, sometimes you should push the student to talk. You, need, you can use some name tags and uh, just help you to understand, to know which student, you can call student's name and ask them to answer the questions. It should actually start at the beginning um, of the tutorials where he, they explain the expectations on the students to speak up and um, participate. Maybe give them some participation um, points, you know, that always really helps. So I guess um, to enhance participation, um, you could have more fr friendly group where you, you communicate to the student that, you know, this is only a tutorial, I'm not going to mark you based on your, whether you're right or wrong, but whether you're speaking. Because a lot of units have participation marks and you tend to think that it's whether you're saying the right thing or wrong thing, but actually in reality a lot of tutors tell us we're just looking for people who are participative. You know, as long as you're participating, trying to actively find the answer, that's what we're looking for. So I guess with these things, the tutor makes it clear, it will help. I think one of my um, lecturers for actual studies, he's really, he's really good at teaching. What he does is that he group, like, because for actual studies, um, we have small classes. For example, we have like 80 students in one lecture only. So what he does is that he, gi he gives out a piece of paper with like, I don't know, most recent news or information from the newspaper or on the internet that he browsed through. And what he does that he, before the class, he number every single one of them at the back of the page without people, like without the students knowing and he hand it out randomly. And he, it's, I think he ranks from one to 18 or something. And then every student gets a different number of piece of paper and then randomly switching them into number one, that's your group. And that's really good in the sense that you get to know that person first. You're like your not friends, but your classmates that you don't know that person. Get to know that person first, and then start discussing that question 
belonging to a group and you elect one person to come up with the answer. And that's a really good way of interacting and really good way of learning, like knowledge spillover between students. That's really important. They need to, like, you know, like in Macquarie, they have a lot of um, overseas students, right? So I think they need to be aware of this. Like, um, for me, I am an overseas student. So when the first year, my first year is really tough because I can speak too fast. <laughs> and I can't even, like, catch them. So I did pretty bad in my first year. But I'm getting better now, so that's fine for me. So especially for the first year lecturer, they need to know the standards of the overseas students. They're not familiar with the accent and stuff. So yeah, they need to speak, speak a bit slower. <laughs>